It's great to be here uh, in Toronto as Alberta launches phase two of our Alberta is Calling campaign. Alberta offers uh, the best quality of life at uh, one of the lowest costs of living anywhere in Canada. And we're here in downtown Toronto to tell Torontonians and Ontarians that story as uh, we step up our advertising campaign uh, to tell people the good news. There is a place in this country where you can afford to own a home uh, and where you can also benefit from the highest incomes and lowest taxes available anywhere in Canada. That place is called Alberta. Uh, we're also launching uh, today a renewed Alberta's Calling campaign uh, out west in Vancouver. And we've chosen Vancouver and Toronto for a very obvious reason. Uh, because these are two great Canadian cities, but uh, increasingly they've, they've become unaffordable for ordinary families uh, to make a living and to own a home in the Greater Toronto and Greater Vancouver regions. Uh, you know, uh, Alberta has long been one of, the, one of the most prosperous parts of Canada. But what uh, Torontonians and Vancouverites m may not know is that we have the highest incomes in the country and the lowest taxes. But the cost of living difference now is dramatic. Uh, the cost of buying a home in Calgary or Edmonton is about one third of the cost of buying the same home in the greater Toronto area or the greater Vancouver region. In fact, we've done the math. For an employee making $125,000 a year in the GTA, that's not just in the 416, but even folks out in the 905, uh, that's about a $1.2 million average price for a detached home. It's roughly the same as in the greater Vancouver region, and that's not just downtown Vancouver, that's averaging things all the way up, uh, to, up the valley. So $1.2 million for an average detached home in the GVR and the GTA versus about $420,000 in Calgary and about $360,000 in Edmonton with, of course, even more affordable ho uh, housing in our mid-sized Alberta cities and smaller rural communities, uh, all of which have an amazing quality of life. In fact, the Economist Intelligencer Unit from The Economist magazine uh, just rated Calgary as having the highest quality of life, not just in uh, Canada, not just in North America, but in the entire Western Hemisphere, the third highest quality of life in the entire world for any major city. Uh, and uh, Edmonton last year was ranked uh, as having the fastest growing tech sector in North America. Now, a lot of folks, I, friends down in, in Toronto and in and, and Vancouver, when they think of Alberta, they may think of our largest industry, our energy sector, of which we are immensely proud. Uh, but what we, through the Alberta is Calling campaign, we're hoping to uh, raise awareness amongst our fellow Canadians about just how diverse Alberta's economy is. Uh, in fact, uh, we have seen enormous growth uh, in the past couple of years right across our economy, which is uh, seen faster diversification than, than, than ever in our history. Huge growth in our information technology, innovation and tech sectors. Uh, some of the most successful recent startup tech businesses in the country located in Alberta uh, and huge new investments that are calling out for skilled IT workers. Amazon Web Services is making the single largest capital investment in the history of the Canadian tax sector right now uh, in Calgary, a $4.3 billion capital spend on uh, their huge new data centers. Amazon, that's Amazon Web Services. Uh, global tech companies like Enphasis and I Emphasis uh, locating uh, collectively 2,500 uh, high paying jobs uh, in the Calgary area. Companies like uh, Rogers and RBC moving jobs from the GTA and elsewhere in Canada to centers of excellence in Alberta. IBM, uh, Deloitte, and so many others. And as I say, a huge and growing startup sector right across uh, the province. The biggest challenge that we face is a current and growing shortage of skilled workers right across the skill spectrum. In the Alberta is Calling campaign, we are focusing particularly on healthcare workers uh, skilled tradespeople, but also uh, information technology and, peop uh, and digital uh, people with digital skills for the IT sector. But I want to be clear, we have great jobs uh, with good incomes that benefit from our low cost of living and low taxes 
across the entire income spectrum, the, across the entire skill spectrum, from entry-level hospitality jobs all the way up uh, to surgeons and uh, advanced engineers. So Alberta has the fastest growing economy in Canada. We are leading the country in employment growth. Uh, our, um, we, are, we have the highest household incomes, the highest average individual incomes, the highest disposable incomes, the lowest personal income taxes, the lowest business taxes. We're the only province with no uh, sales tax, no land transfer tax, no payroll tax, no capital tax. Right now, we have no provincial fuel tax. We have the most affordable energy costs uh, and the, uh, the lowest region. cost of living generally. So uh, altogether, this makes a huge difference. And I want to make a special shout out to younger folks in the GTA and the greater Vancouver region, because I think uh, they all have the dream, quite rightly, of home ownership. Uh, I, I, but I saw a survey recently saying that a quarter of younger Torontonians have given up on the dream of ever owning a home. That is a tragedy. Anybody in Canada has the right to achieve the middle class dream of home ownership. Uh, and that dream is alive and well in Alberta. So uh, our, the message we're sending today is that Alberta is calling. Uh, not only do we have the highest incomes, the lowest taxes, the lowest cost of living, uh, but we have an amazing quality of life right across every region of the province. So uh, phase two of the Alberta Calling Campaign, which we're here to highlight, is that uh, we are uh, wrapping uh, a Toronto uh, Transit Commission stations for the Toronto subway. Uh, right below us here at uh, Young and Dundas, we have uh, the, uh, we have the, uh, we've wrapped the entire station in Alberta is calling messages. Uh, which are sent, which are uh, hopefully getting noticed, and, and we believe they are. In fact, for the first quarter of this year, Alberta led Canada in inter net interprovincial uh, migration. So we encourage folks to uh, to pay attention to those messages. Uh, if you want a place where you can achieve the dream of home ownership, uh, and uh, and 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 have a higher quality of life, if you want a place where you can have a 15-minute commute instead of a 50-minute commute. If you want a place where there's no sales tax, uh, if you want a place where you're uh, 45 minutes from the Rocky Mountains, uh, if you want a place uh, that has a culture of enterprise uh, and it, it is, a, is a land of, of opportunity, then Alberta is calling. With that, and speaking of which, uh, I'm going to invite one of our uh, talented members of Alberta's legislature to tell a little bit more about that story. Miranda Rosen is the MLA for Banff, uh, Canada, uh, Canmore Banff Kananaskis, which um, is probably the single most beautiful part of Canada, if not the world. Uh, and she can tell you a little bit more about the spectacular quality of life that Alberta has to offer. Miranda? Thank you, Premier. Well, our Premier has just spoken about the affordability of life in Alberta, like low taxes and the lower cost of housing. But I would like to talk about some of the things that make Alberta unique. Alberta is home to vibrant communities, friendly people, and some of the most beautiful places on planet Earth that are just waiting for you to come experience them. I am the MLA for Banff Kananaskis, and that means that most of the majestic landscapes that you see in our Alberta is Calling campaign are right in my backyard. In fact, when many of you think of the Canadian Rockies, an image of jagged peaks and a fluorescent blue lake may come to your mind. Well, that, that place is the place that I call home, and that place is the place that you could call home too. The tourism economy of the Canadian Rockies is the busiest in all of Canada, and it thrives off young professionals looking for a bit more adventure than downtown Toronto might offer. Whether you want to hike, bike, summit the tallest peak, paddle the bluest lake, or ski the deepest bowl, our Rocky Mountains offer a lifestyle that you quite literally won't find anywhere else. Exploring the great outdoors where natural beauty abounds, wildflowers grow around every corner, and adventure is everywhere, is a uniquely Albertan way of life. In Alberta, even in the winter, the sun always seems to shine, figuratively and literally, almost over 300 days per year, more than any other province in Canada. So much so that I got to ski on Canada Day this year in July in 25 degree heat. 
So if you are a young professional, you can find a home, a job, an adventurous lifestyle, and a community of peers living right inside the heart of our Rocky Mountain towns that are ready to welcome you. So if you are a Torontonian or a Vancouverite looking for something more, Alberta is waiting. But maybe you're more of a city person, and if so, I'd like to ask you, how long is your commute to work? Is it 45 minutes in the morning and again after work? An hour? Maybe an hour and a half? Well, from the heart of downtown Calgary, you can still be in our Rocky Mountain paradise in under an hour, affording you the perfect balance of a fast-paced downtown career, as well as the opportunity to recreate in our backcountry and our mountains after hours. So whether you want to work in tech, business consultancy, analytics, energy development, you name it, there is an opportunity for you in, in Alberta. And don't worry, the upbeat arts, culture, festival, and restaurant scene that you love so much about Toronto exists in Calgary too. So if you're looking to throw on your high heels and grab a nice cocktail, attend a concert at one of our amazing music venues, or put on your cowboy boots and go two-stepping for a night, you can do all of that any night of the week in Calgary too. And don't worry, if you don't know how to two-step, we'll teach you. The lifestyle and career opportunities that exist in Alberta are the reason that we've had the highest paid and the youngest workforce in Alberta for, or in Canada for a generation. Having more time in your schedule, a career in an exciting and an emerging field, a higher disposable income, a home that you can own, and a network of young professionals building a life just like you and room to breathe are all reasons that I'm Albertan by choice and then I hope you'll become one too. Our province is a brilliant place of hope and opportunity. It always has been. It's a place where the only limitations when you come here will be the size of your dreams and the caliber of your work ethic. We are so excited to welcome you to our amazing home and even more excited for you to consider making it your forever home. So with that, you can start by visiting albertaiscalling.ca to get more information and we can't wait to see you. And I'd like to turn things over to my other colleague who will speak to more of the reasons that Alberta is the most wonderful place to live and call home. And that is my colleague, Mr. R.J. Sigurdsson. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, my name is R.J. Sigurdsson. I'm at the MLA for Highwood, which is actually a riding that sits just on the edge of Calgary. And as this premier spoke about, we are here to today to talk about one of our favorite topics, the province of Alberta. As you know, Alberta right now is booming. Our plans to grow and diversify our economy are actually working right now. We are the beginning of a new Alberta decade and we're inviting you to be a part of that. I've got to be honest with you, we have become victims of our own success. We now face a big issue. We have more jobs than we have qualified people to fill them. In fact, industry leaders tell us that there are over 100,000 job openings right now in our province. Whether you're looking for a job in tech and innovation, agriculture, healthcare, manufacturing and logistics, hospitality, skilled trades, or any other industry, Alberta businesses want to hire you. Moving for work is a big decision for you and your family. I know from experience that when you're raising a family, time and money are two of the most important things that you have. So let me tell you a little bit about my experience of living, working and raising a family in Alberta. In my lifetime, I've enjoyed continuous employment year over year. I started out in the energy sector, then moved on to skilled trades, which led me to becoming a project manager and on to becoming a business owner. Every year in my life, Alberta has provided me and my family endless opportunities to grow and advance in our careers. And this story is not just unique to me. My wife and I are extremely proud parents of three boys, of which our oldest has just turned 24 years old and has been working since graduating post-secondary. And in just two short years since graduation, has now purchased his first Home. The Alberta Advantage has given my family and me opportunities to truly live a great life. If you're curious to find out more about what Alberta has to offer you and your family, check out albertaiscalling.ca, which includes information about careers, housing, and lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you, Archie. Thank you, uh, 
Miranda and Premier. We will now move to the Q&A. I understand that there may have been some audio issues for folks on the line. If you need anything repeated, please let me know. Um, so we will go to the Q&A. Brock, uh, just uh, before doing that, I, sure. I should note because I think it's broken in the Calgary Herald, some very good news. We're going back to Alberta to make a very another uh, exciting announcement this afternoon, uh, which is an historic uh, announcement for Alberta's economy. Uh, De Havilland is announcing today that they have uh, decided on building a major new uh, airplane manufacturing plant uh, east of Calgary uh, that will help to employ 1,500 high-paying manufacturing workers uh, in a game-changing investment for manufacturing in Alberta. Just another very uh, major sign of the economic growth, job opportunities, and diversification happening that will be three different lines of aircraft uh, being produced uh, in Alberta. And uh, we hope moving to a fourth line eventually, uh, following the construction of this major plant. Uh, some of the work that has historically been done here in Toronto at uh, Downsview will be uh, relocated to Calgary since Downsview is being repurposed with land development. Um, and this is just another step forward in the huge growth in our uh, aviation sector with more big news to follow in that sector in just the weeks ahead. So I just wanted to cap it off by saying uh, there's uh, that story broke this morning in the Calgary Herald. There will be more news to follow this afternoon uh, and I'll be back to announce that uh, with the Havilland in, Calgary, in the Calgary area. Terrific. Thank you, Premier. Operator, please put through our first caller. Thank you. The first call is Kendra Slugowski, Global Edmonton. Hi, Mr. Premier. I wanted to ask you about um, one of your ministers, Mr. Uh, Casey Maddu, tweeted out a response uh, uh, to the story that the federal government is uh, preparing to drop the vaccine border rules. Uh, he said it was never about science. He called them the tyrannical policies and thanked the Freedom Convoy. So I wanted your response to that and also to follow up. What does that say about the Alberta government and its own um, uh, COVID and vaccine policies that were put in place. Thank you. Well, it's no secret that our government ha was, has been consistently opposed to unnecessary federal travel restrictions, uh, specifically the ones that are still in place were uh, implemented in December of last year. I told the Prime Minister directly, as did I think virtually all of the Premiers, uh, that there was no scientific rationale. In fact, uh, I remember in December of last year, when the Prime Minister uh, ostensibly consulted with the Premiers on uh, travel restrictions to address the Omicron uh, variant, uh, I asked Dr. Theresa Tam if uh, uh, travel restrictions would impede what was already widespread community transmission of the Omicron variant of the COVID virus. And Dr. Tam said, effectively, she said, no, it, travel restrictions would not impede. Uh, transmission. So I asked the Prime Minister, well then why are you doing this? If it's not going to impede transmission, why are you going? To, why are you doing this? And, and he essentially said, well, uh, Jason, you, you guys in the provinces hold all of the levers. The only levers we have are related to travel and we have to be seen to be doing something. So it's been clear to me from the beginning that at least this latest round of travel restrictions uh, were political and optical, not about reducing transmission. I think it's become a huge inconvenience. And the, the one industry that has not yet fully recovered from the COVID catastrophe has been travel and tourism. Um, my colleague, uh, Ms. Rosen, knows this very well with uh, representing the heart of, of, of Alberta and Canadian tourism. Uh, a lot of demand has returned, but we still haven't seen the full pre-COVID levels of travel and tourism. So uh, it's well past time for the federal government to lift those measures. And uh, that's what we've been calling for all along. Um, in, in terms of um, other comments, like you'll go, I, look, I, I don't monitor, I actually don't monitor Twitter. If you want to hear Minister Madhu's views or clarification from him, I suggest you talk to him. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, you know, provincial measures are of entirely different nature because the provinces are responsible for the healthcare system. And our commitment to Albertans was not to allow our hospitals to be overwhelmed. Uh, I believed it would be uh, immoral to create, allow a situation where we would be denying people uh, care uh, 
uh, and cutting off life support from people uh, based on arbitrary criteria if we reached um, a level of hospitalizations during COVID that was completely unsustainable. We came close, thank God, we didn't quite hit that maximum peak of stretch capacity, uh, but that's in part because we did intervene with some difficult decisions at various times uh, to uh, reduce transmission. And um, we had hard decisions to make, just like every government in every part of the world. I can tell you this, in the Canadian context, Alberta had the least restrictive COVID regime because we treated restrictions as a last and limited resort, and I think we were right to do so. Thank you, Kendra. Do you have a follow-up? Yes, please. Just one follow-up. Uh, you're working to entice people from Toronto and Vancouver, and they may not have the same views as uh, your minister about the Freedom Convoy. Do you think his comments thanking the Freedom Convoy uh, will hurt your campaign in any way? You know, I, I really don't think people are going to make life decisions based on uh, whether they agree or disagree with one particular person in a different province. There are, it, Canada is a big, diverse, uh, pluralistic democracy where we have a wide open debate on a lot of issues, naturally COVID being one of them, uh, and there are people with different views on issues across the country. I, I will say this, I've met more than a few people who have approached me uh, in Alberta who told me that they came to the province uh, from other provinces precisely because we were the least restrictive during the COVID era. And they appreciated uh, a government that was trying its best to minimize the damaging effect of COVID era restrictions. So uh, I actually think, you know, for a lot of Canadians, who believed that governments uh, went too far and too quickly in restricting people's lives, uh, that Alberta has uh, been a magnet for, for a lot of people who, who value uh, freedom. Uh, and at the same time, we can, we can share with Canadians that Alberta ended the COVID era with a lower, lower per capita COVID fatality rate than Canada, uh, than uh, other, several other provinces and we did so with the least damaging restrictions. Was Alberta's COVID response perfect? No, of course not. Uh, we, we can all, we, there will be plenty of time to look back and see how we could have done better to learn the lessons. But for a province with, with lower uh, fatality level than Canada, with the least damaging restrictions, um, I think that that sends a message that uh, it's, it's a province that uh, seeks uh, uh, to find a balance that respects personal freedom, but also in, in, uh, ensure access to, to health care. Okay, that wraps up for today. Thank you all. Over here.